come spend the typical evening with me in the kitchen. Normally when I film my videos in the kitchen, it's after I've spent the entire day in the kitchen either cooking or baking. So I thought I would bring you guys along in what a typical evening in our kitchen would look like whenever I have not spent the entire day in the kitchen. So I had other things going on this day and I was just now getting in the kitchen to cook some dinner. I started out by prepping some pie crust so that I could make an apple pie. I started with the dessert today and we don't make a dessert every single evening. Normally what I like to do is make one dessert and that way we can eat it all week long. So it works really well just because it is just me and Ben. So it's just two people and we can eat the pie after dinner or just whenever we want it really. And it just makes it easier. So I really don't have to think about dessert all that much. But today I was going to be making an apple pie just because I had the extra time. It has been raining nonstop here in Kentucky. And we're having really nice weather besides the rain. So it was like a 65, 70 degree day. So I did have my kitchen window open. And it was messing with my pie crust so much. I really didn't think about it until I started making the pie crust and it wouldn't come together. So I kept adding more flour and after several minutes of working on it, it did finally come together, but I knew it was the weather just because it, later in this video, I'll start making rolls and it also did it with my rolls. So in my pie crust recipe, I ended up using about half a cup extra flour than normal. And then in my roll recipe, I think I used about three quarters of a cup extra additional flour just to get it to thicken up because I guess there was that much moisture in the air. This pie crust recipe is already up on my blog, so I'll have that link down below for you guys. But in this video, you're gonna see the reality of being in a kitchen, especially my kitchen. I'm a very messy cook and I cut a lot of corners when and where I can just because I don't like to spend all my time in the kitchen, especially on the days whenever I don't need to or I don't plan on it. So some days whenever I'm doing canning or preserving food, I will plan on spending all day in the kitchen. And it's like on those days I want to be in the kitchen. And then whenever I'm just making dinner in the evenings, sometimes I'm just not really wanting to do it. And I just kind of cut a lot of corners and went out of the kitchen. So that's how this particular day was. It had been a long day and it was raining and I just truly didn't want to be in the kitchen, but I needed to get something on the dinner table. As you can see here, the pie crust was just crumbling and falling apart. I was struggling so bad. I've never had trouble with these pie crust recipes before, but today I was and I almost wanted to take it back out and redo it just for the sake of this YouTube video. And I thought to myself, no, we're gonna keep it real here. And so as you can see here, I just start breaking it and pushing it together and it forms back. It's just, it's not that pliable. Normally it is very, you can move it around and get it to do exactly what you want. But today it wasn't, it was just cracking and falling apart and it was very hard to handle so it still cooked and baked up perfectly though so i just kept going with it and it may just not be a picture perfect but that's the reality it is not always like that in my kitchen and today was that day where we just needed something on the table and looks did not matter next i'm going to be working on making some rolls to go with dinner so this is a super simple, easy roll recipe, but it does require a rise time. So usually about an hour and a half to two hours before dinner, I'll come in the kitchen and mix these up so that they can rise. And then you do have to shape them or roll them out, whichever you prefer, and then let them rise again. But this recipe is on my blog, but I'll go ahead and give you the recipe. I like to use my stand mixer just because of the dough hook because they do need to be mixed pretty well. So to my bowl earlier in the video, I added the sugar and the yeast, which it is one tablespoon of yeast and then a third cup of sugar. And you're gonna mix that up. And then on my stove, I melted milk and butter. You can also do it in the microwave. If you have a microwave, we just don't have one, but I melted one and a quarter cups of milk and then four tablespoons of butter. And 
you don't want it boiling or anything like that you just want it warm so after that then you're going to pour that in your mixer bowl you're going to add one egg and one teaspoon of salt and mix that up and then you're going to add three and a half to three and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour and it should be a soft dough you want it to be a little bit tacky but it shouldn't be sticky at all but once all that is combined then you're just going to cover it and let it sit for an hour or until it just doubles in size On days like today is whenever all the days that I've spent previously canning and all the hard hours and just time that I've put into canning, it truly pays off on the days that like today whenever you do not feel like cooking. You have just had so much going on and you still have to feed your family and you want a home cooked meal on the table whenever dinner time comes around, but you just truly do not have the energy to do it. So that is whenever this canned food comes in handy. So late last fall, I canned these apples and it is homemade apple pie filling. It just has some apples and then spices in it. So they are super versatile, but I did not put a thickener in it whenever I made them. So typically you would put like Therm Flow or Clear Gel or Sure Gel in them to make it a thicker consistency. But as you can see here, I did not do that whenever I canned them just so that they could be more versatile and I could use them to make fried apples or just whatever I wanted. So I am going to be adding about probably about half a cup of flour to this and that is just going to help thicken it up on its own without having to add any kind of additional thickener. So usually most people use Thermflow and i have it on hand just in case i ever need it but i don't really like to use it and much rather just thicken it with flour but having the canned apple pie filling is such a lifesaver on days like today because really the only hands-on time is making the pie crust and then mixing in that flour and then just assembling it but other than that it is just baking time and it does bake for about an hour this recipe is over on my blog but it is made from scratch like homemade with apples so if you don't have a canned apple pie filling there is a recipe for this apple pie over on my blog that you can follow with fresh apples and i do make that normally whenever i'm in the mood to make an apple pie whenever i'm in a funk and just do not really feel like being in my kitchen then i always make a point to make myself still do the dishes as i'm working so that it doesn't build up and get worse because that's my biggest thing whenever i just don't want to be in the kitchen i do not want to do dishes i'm fine to cook the meal but i don't want to do dishes so i always just tell myself that just push through and tomorrow is going to be better and it was the very next day i was ready to be in the kitchen and I made some sourdough bread and stuff like that. So it was just this day. I don't know. It had been a rough day and I was just ready to be done. And I say all this in hopes that it is not discouraging, but I hope that it is encouraging to know that it is normal to have bad days and it is okay to have bad days. But sometimes you do still have to push through. You still have to put the food on the table for your family. You still have to provide a clean home for your family. And usually I can take so much pride in that. And after it is done, I truly do feel better about myself and about how the day went. And I feel like I accomplished something even if it was just a really hard day. And even if the only thing that you get done in the day is feeding your family, then that is still a major thing that you have accomplished. So that is what was getting me through today was the simple fact that I was still providing a home cooked meal and not going for fast food, but I knew that tomorrow was gonna be a better day. If you go to my blog, then you can see how to correctly roll out these rolls. I really don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it, but I am cutting corners like I've said in this video so many times already. But as you can see, I am just pinching off dough balls and placing them onto this parchment paper. And typically that is not how I make these rolls. Normally I would flatten them out on a lightly floured surface and then take a rolling pin and roll them out to probably about half an inch thick or so and then I would take a pizza cutter or a knife just any kind of cutter and I would cut them into squares and that is how you get like the sister Schubert's copycat rolls 
and that's what these are intended to be but on this day I was not feeling it so I just pinched off the extra dough balls and put them onto this parchment paper and I put the other dough into the freezer and that will be used at a later time. I know I've talked about this before on my channel and I just am a strong believer in it. If you clean while you cook, it makes the process and it just gives you a clean slate for each step. And it just makes me feel so much more accomplished, but also just more organized in my kitchen and in my cooking. I cannot move on from one task to another without cleaning up unless I know that I'm going to be getting that same thing dirty again. So if I'm going to be making a double batch of rolls or something, then I would not clean my stand mixer in between. But since I'm done with my stand mixer and I'm done with these flowers for the evening, then I am going to go ahead and clean up and just get this place reset. And that way it can be ready because I know that tomorrow is going to be a new day and I'm going to want a clean, fresh slate in here in the kitchen. So I like to just wipe down and clean up and make sure that it's ready for a new day. It can be hard to do whenever you're right in the middle of a tough day or a hard day but if you go ahead and set yourself up for success on your hard day so if you go ahead and clean up your kitchen and set yourself up for breakfast in the morning then it's gonna start that day off better instead of walking down to a dirty messy kitchen and having to clean first thing in the morning Earlier in the day, I had been going through some of our Christmas totes that were in the addition and I found these white enamel bowls that I wanted to use in my kitchen and I did not know that those pine cones were in here, but it scared me so bad, but it was just pine cones and I guess they were left over from Christmas decorations that I did at our old house, but I saw these in the totes and thought that they would be the perfect addition to use in our kitchen and I love that they are enamel and they match our kitchen sink and our stove so i just love anything enamel and anything vintage honestly since i was in need of a quick easy dinner i decided to just fall back on my canned food that we had canned earlier in the year well actually it would have been last year from our garden so I pulled out some green beans and some canned potatoes that we had done and any time that we cook our green beans and potatoes it tastes so good. It's like opening up a jar of summertime every time I eat some. So I like to put them in the same pot together and this is how we normally always eat our green beans in the summertime. We always cook them with new potatoes and butter and we let them simmer like pretty much all day and I don't know it's a favorite summertime meal for us well it's not really a meal it's a side but we absolutely love it so how I do this is I just put green beans in the pot and I drain about half the water off of the green beans and the potatoes but I dump that in and then I'll put in probably about probably three or four tablespoons of butter and I will let them boil for at least 10 minutes and it just helps all the flavors meld together and it is so delicious as a side. For our meat tonight, we're gonna be having pork steak. So to my cast iron skillet, I am coating it with some butter and letting that melt to just preheat the cast iron skillet a little bit and we have plenty of pork steak since we got our hog back so we have been eating a lot of meat meals with just a basic garden side and then usually just some kind of bread usually a roll or a slice of bread and it just makes a very very simple meal so if i'm ever not feeling creative in the kitchen we will usually always fall back on a basic meat a vegetable and then just some kind of grain usually just a bread or a roll We like to season our pork steak the exact same way that we season our beef steak and I know a lot of people just prefer salt and pepper on their steaks but we prefer a seasoning salt and then a steak seasoning also. We really like the bold flavor of the seasoning. It just enhances the meat so much and it just takes it to the next level instead of it just being a basic meat. 
that's one of the things that that is great about living on a homestead and raising your own meat and you get a lot of cuts of meat back from your butcher that you don't even know what they are i had never had a pork steak before we butchered this hog so we i had never had one before i had no idea how to cook it but you really grow as a cook whenever you begin homesteading just because you really branch out. You have more cuts than what are just at the grocery store and usually at the grocery store I would just buy ground sausage or ground hamburger. So widening your palate is something that you really grow to do on a homestead and just in general whenever you begin cooking your own food and cooking from scratch. But it really opens the door to a whole new world and with seasoning and just a basic meat you can totally create a different meal every single night using the same cuts of meat over and over but it just brings a wide variety to your life As you can see, these rolls still turned out completely fine, even though I didn't take the time to dirty up the counter again and roll them out perfectly. They still doubled in size and they were absolutely delicious. They just may not have been quite as pretty, but that's okay because every recipe and everything that you cook is very versatile and it can always be adapted to cut corners and you can make it quicker these rolls they could totally be made in my recipe i call for two rise times but you could honestly cut that down to one rise time so as soon as you get them out of the mixer you could simply just go ahead and shape them and put them on your baking tray and then that you can cut out an entire hour of rise time so I usually do that with a lot of my breads actually, and I've never had any problems, but it's all about figuring out how to make the food work for you and how to fit that into your lifestyle. Since it is raining after dinner, I'll immediately start cleaning up and normally if it's not raining, then I'll go outside with Ben and we'll do chores together or we'll start working on something outside and just to get us out of the house. But also we are counting down the days until time change. It is actually this weekend and I cannot wait for the longer day lot. I am counting down the days until we can start working on our garden and getting seeds out. I'm just ready for that season of life. I am tired of all of the rain. It makes it miserable and it is so hard on all of our animals that the cows have been having a hard time. And last weekend we had to doctor one of our cows hooves. So we are ready to move on from this winter and the spring rain. So we are ready for the sunshine and the warmth to come. But I just wipe everything down in the kitchen and then I will usually start to sweep the floor and not every evening do I pull out the vacuum to sweep but on this particular evening it did need a sweep with the vacuum just because it had been raining and the mud had been tracked in so I will usually pull out the vacuum cleaner for that instead of just usually my normal broom. I like to work from top to bottom whenever I'm cleaning so I'll make sure that all the countertops are wiped down. I like to do my dishes first then wipe my countertops down in my stove and then I'll sweep the floor and usually mop if it needs mopped but this evening it didn't need mopped but that is how I close down my kitchen and get it ready for the next day. So there's just something about going to bed with a clean kitchen and waking up with a clean kitchen. You're able to just start fresh. And whenever I wipe down my countertops, it is very therapeutic for me. It's like I'm wiping away today's worries and just all the troubles of today and waking up to a new fresh kitchen tomorrow where you can begin again and it is always a fresh start. But that is going to be it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys will like and subscribe.